Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. Today we'll be looking at this, and this is a radio you'll be familiar with if you've seen Peugeots or Citroëns and possibly some other PSA cars. This is out of a Citroën Zara Picasso, and it's a Clarion radio. It's an RD301. And the problem with this one, this is a radio that's been in the car that my kids tend to be ferried about in and since they were young young babies and the radio just really does not work anymore in fact it's mm, best described as crazy because the cd player was messing around and then we sorted that and then the other day i plugged this in sorry i turned this on in the car and it was just making all sorts of crazy sounds and nothing was working the screen had died everything has gone bonkers the screen's actually on the head unit inside the car, so it's a bit worrying. And when I took it out of the car, I've swapped this and I've reprogrammed a new radio with the VIN number of the car, so we don't need this one anymore. But it would be nice to look inside to see what went wrong. And I noticed some noises. You can hear that, but there's certainly some unpleasant sounds going on in there. So let's just work out how we're going to get into it. Looks like a screw hole right there, right away. Oh. Now that's a little bit firm, but not too firm. And the reason is because I've already been in this radio when the kids decided it was a multi uh, changer and this fed, I think three CDs they got into this in one go. Amazingly, I managed to open it and just unbend a little bit of metal that tensions the CD because that got a bit slack and it all worked worked for ages so you've got the front panel and the innards in a nice metal tin so let's work on getting this PCB out safely that was easy enough so that's that's actually quite a lot nicer than the one I replaced it with perhaps I might just uh, swap this with the one that's in the car it's certainly a lot cleaner put that aside for now you don't need that Not a lot to see really from here. You can just see it's just a, it looks like a metal can. Probably designed for multiple front panels really to fit in different vehicles. Never really looked inside a car CD player. It's not had to open up one up before, but let's attack the visible screws. more screws on the back. Crikey, that's tough. That one's not going anywhere. Neither's that one. I'll need something to give me a little bit more purchase on that. Fortunately, I've got some grabbers. I do like some of these micro screwdriver sets come with a little torque bar. You've seen that where they've got a hole in the handle so you can run that little bar in to give you a tiny bit more. This is rounded. So we've got the one out on this side, but the one on the other side has rounded itself. I'm just I'm just prying the lid, just playing with it just to see if we need to go any further. Great. So basically this screw here could be impossible to open or at least diminishing returns. I could get it open if I really want to. I'll just try some basic manipulation with this pliers on the end. If I could get just a quarter of a turn is all I need. If you're doing this, be very careful because just like that, you see how it snapped shut? You'll bite yourself. Good. Well, that's done. I don't know if that helps us. I can hear something in here, though. That, that rattling. We heard that earlier, didn't we? Metal can. That's clearly something to do with the RF signal side. Some more screws. I think this CD mechanism. Oh, gosh. 
again super tight okay so while I'm here I'm going to try to show you the bit of metal that gets bent if your kids shove too many discs in so you've got a chance of unbending that Okay, so these two front screws have to come out to let that drive all tight. Again, using the old plier technique. So in two minds now, really, if I'll keep this radio, even if I, even if it's well, if it's fixed, good, definitely, but. If it's not fixed, will I use it for spares or will I just get another one off eBay? Pop that out, there we go. So it's a little bit like a PC drive really. Pretty solid, has to work in a car, rough environment. So something I can't quite remember now, when they jammed all these discs in, you could see this panel here is what must put tension on the disc when the, the tray goes up and down internally and it just had become bent so if you open it if you, if you find your cds aren't playing after your kids have done something similar i think what i did is i think i put a screwdriver under here yeah and then just push down on this to try to curve the metal back down so this would push on the cds a bit more tension and that's all it took really it's not much force is needed so just experiment just do it a little bit, pop it back in your car. Now, can you see something in here that shouldn't be? A copper coin. <laughs> now, as you know, copper's a great conductor. It's in most of the wiring in a car harness. And it's been floating around in here. Now, it's on the bottom at the moment, but was it on the top? Was it just jumping around here, causing chaos? That'll explain that crazy sound I heard, it's sort of massive oscillation. Um, if this was in the car, I'm just looking at how, how it would have gone. I mean, they'd have poked the, seed, the penny in and it would have gone in here. Mm, not convinced yet kind of in kind of not in just seeing if it would just fallen through this into the lower tray it would have taken some work actually because i can see it's in there and it's not going anywhere but then you'd push subsequently you'd push some cds in that wouldn't work you know it doesn't actually want to go in it's it's thicker than a cd so i'm not sure how they got it in Maybe we can take this part a little bit further. I'm quite curious now as to where the VIN programming is done. If the vehicle identification number is actually programmed in one of these main chips or is programmed into this panel. Doesn't really matter in this case because whatever part I replace will work because both have been coded to the car. Well, that's all our screws. The only parts of the screws here left just hold this front part of this chassis on, which doesn't affect this PCB, but this PCB certainly doesn't look like it wants to go anywhere. Might require these last three screws out. then it will be really unlikely I'm going to reassemble this. <laughs> Although I'll convince myself that reassembling it takes up a lot less space on the shelf if I do decide to keep some of it as parts. That last screw was actually just starting to round and so that one. If, that's, if these screws round they're going to be impossible to get out without drilling 
the reverse drill bit. And at that point, I will definitely stop the uh, diminishing returns on it. Okay. Oh, that's good. We were there. Oh, there we go. So that's actually a heat shrink. A heat shrink. A heat shrink. And there's a big chip there, which looks like it's going to be some sort of huge amplifier, no doubt. If you go in the uh, computer programming for these, when you're setting them up, you can actually set up the output as well on these to be a line out level rather than the volume out. So that's if you're using it with an external amplifier. Now I can see why we can't get this out because do you see here, the board is covered with these twists. I can try to undo them. Now it's relatively soft metal. So we'll have to find all of those. I can see there's one here, which is going to be very difficult to get to. So just to show you, these ones were quite tr tricky and there's one right in here that's going to be tricky. In fact, I can't put enough torque on it with the screwdriver alone. But looking at the ones I've already undone, you have to have them perfectly. Look, this it really doesn't want to go. It's almost as if there's something else holding this. Ah, okay. <laughs> right, there's no way this is coming off. But I'm going to tell you why. What you can see here, you can see one twist which would normally be like that. Locking this to the PCB, but under this solder blob is actually a pin connected to the other side of this, which is soldered in place. If I flip this on the back, so this is the actual twist tab portion and this is the actual solder tag grounding this radio. So there's no way this is ever coming off. So the only last bit for we can do there is really just have a look at these chips. So here's one, a TEA 6880H. See if that tickles your fancy and Google that one. An NEC 784216BY. Who knows what that could be? Anything. SA A6581T. For all you chip junkies. TDA 360SAT. And two more. Look at those. An Atmel. Is that something clever? A T double S four six three and then an Amos zero four two REMQ REMQ. So I hope that's been of some interest to you inside this Clarion radio. That's the model and part number. If you have one of these, if you hear a rattling, it might be a coin. Don't ignore the coin. That'll kill it. What will I salvage today off it? I'm just looking over these pieces. I think today this front panel and this drive mechanism are going to go onto my shelf of curiosity. As ever, please feel free to leave comments down below and click subscribe if you'd like to be updated when I make these videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you.